I'd like to highlight only about six or seven specific milestones, which I call milestones, but they are the foundational pillars on which Amrit Kal is going to put all the efforts together to take India into that um, Vikasit Bharat by 2047. Antyodhya is for that inclusive growth in which, of course, you know about the free food scheme. I'm not uh, expanding on it. But empowering aspect of it is the Swanadi, which can be taken as a, a, a very important example. 57 lakh loans have been granted to street vendors so that the smallest of small person can build his entrepreneurship based on those uh, sovereign guaranteed, in a way, collateral free loan which they get. And uh, very many schemes of the Prime Minister, one particular on which the UNICEF has come up with a statement saying this open defecation free ODF families have actually saved 50,000 British pounds. This is Uni UNICEF saying it. So they say 50,000 British pounds have been um, saved, or in other words, they've averted to that extent spending on healthcare. So in a way, it is a uh, saving for poorer families. So this scheme of Swachh Bharat and the ODF has actually saved poor people from spending on their health-related matters. The next major, which I would highlight, is the direct benefit transfer, where 37,000 crores of rupees was transferred even during COVID, the lockdown period. 16 plus odd crores of people were covered by it. And therefore, even during a lockdown, if that could help us, the DBT, since after that you are seeing 33 lakh crores has been transferred under the DBT, resulting in savings of almost 2.73 lakh crores for the government because pilferages were cut down. You were able to use technology to make sure benefits reach those who deserve it, and government was not spending to unknown entities. The third, which I'll highlight, is a financial inclusion program which India has never seen before like that. Yes, financial inclusion has been a long-drawn goal on which every year a certain number of incremental number of people would come in. But now, I'd like to highlight the fact that more, almost 50 plus crore people have already been brought into formal banking system. Where were we in 2014-15? Only 15, one five crore people were with bank accounts. Now that has gone up to 50 crore. Equally, connecting to the rural India and farmers. Particularly, I'll take the example of agro-processing, where the value addition element comes for agrarian products. Only two mega food processing plants existed in this country in 2014. That's gone up to 24 in 2023, within a matter of nine years. That brings in value addition to the products. The farmers get better price. The value addition brings jobs, and some of them get exported also the products. The other highlight which I like to bring in as the pillar for Amrit Kal, on which Amrit Kal is going to build towards Vikasit Bharat, is about uh, the emphasis given on uh, sunrise industries. India will now become at least in-house producer of semiconductor capacities. EV adoption is happening in a big way. And therefore, these are things which have emanated from the FDI policy of the country. What is about the FDI policy? Just look at the numbers. India had attracted between 2000, April 2000, and March 2023, 23 years, we had attracted 919 billion US dollars in FDI. But it is important for us to recognize that 65% of this 919 billion dollars, that is about 595.25 billion dollars, had all reached India in the last five, eight years, eight to nine years. So between, in the 23 years, you're receiving 919 billion US dollars, of which 595 plus uh, billion dollars have come only in the last nine years, beginning 2014. So your FDI is coming in. It's like water. It flows to the lower ebb. 
Where policies bring in greater certainty, convenience, ease of doing business, FDI flows in. Of course, uh, disruptions of higher US Fed rate and other things can divert it elsewhere. But despite that, we've been receiving that kind of a flow of the FDI. It's not as if it's coming only for manufacturing, it's coming also for service sector. Service, particularly exports, have also seen a surge from 151 billion that it was US dollars to 325 billion US dollars. So these are all strong foundations which have been laid in the last nine years. There are one or two more I'll add to it. Uh, the third largest startup ecosystem, the PLI uh, scheme, which now cover 14 critical sectors. The UPI, about which, of course, uh, uh, BVR Subramaniam had uh, very clearly mentioned, 100 billion transactions in just the calendar year 2023, over 180 lakh crores being uh, the total value which is being transacted. There's global recognition, G20 was very clearly awed of India's experience in this area. So with all this, Technology and digitization have brought people together. 50 crore people have been brought in into the banking system. Now look at where the unbanked have come into the banking area. 44, 44% it was where we were in 2014. Only 44% had accounts. Now more than 80% people in this country have bank accounts. Look at Gujarat, therefore, in this context. And Gujarat, which has released its Vikasit Bharat vision document. It is a state which has 5% of our population, just 5%. Contributes 8.5% to our GDP. 19% gross value added every year happens from Gujarat to the GVV, GVA of the total country. Total gross value addition to the country, 19% comes from Gujarat. The per capita income, is 1.7 times the national average. So it is a state which actually is rapidly moving forward, and the state is growing at 12% CAGR between 2011 and 2021 in the 10 years, while the national average is 10.4%. So rightly, we are here in Gujarat talking about its vision for 2047, and certainly, uh, 2047, which is going to be developed country for India, and in that, the engine of growth, I see Gujarat being very clear in its vision. I welcome the document, and I'm sure the people of Gujarat, under the leadership of the Chief Minister, will be able to move in that direction. Thank you very much.